Gearhead Trader at True Trading Group. And March 19th was our best TTG Tuesday yet. Every Tuesday, we open up the TTG chat room free for everyone. I want to thank all of, there was a lot of the YouTube community that was in chat today, kind of trading um, with me live and getting a feel for what TTG is all about. Um, so spread the word, guys, it's free on Tuesday, right? If you, if you weren't there today, um, you can register for next TTG Tuesday, which will be a week from today. Uh, to register, you just have to go to truetradinggroup.com. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a little tab. It says TGG Tuesday. Click on that, register. You will get a link that will give you access to um, our chat room on Tuesday for the whole day free. Um, we we also give away like special offers to our TGG Tuesday guests. Um, it includes you know huge discounts on membership packages and programs, huge discounts for um, the trading courses and that kind of stuff that I have available for the website. The, the courses are are included free um, with some of the membership um, packages that that we just my, our way of saying thank you for coming in and joining us on Teach You Tuesday. It's some really cool stuff. We had a really, really awesome time uh, in chat today it was was our best day as far as the amount of amount of guests that came in um, to kind of to see, to see what, what TTG was all about. And it was really cool. We had a really good time. So if you were in chat, thanks for coming by. I had a great time. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did not join us today, make sure you register for the following Tuesday. Uh, like I said, it's totally free. Uh, okay. So to get with that out of the way, I want to get to VXRT, which was my one trade of the day. Um, I only made one trade. VXRT was all it took. So I'm just going to walk you guys through the trade setup. Um, there's a couple of, of, of lessons in here about uh, adding to positions, you know, moving stop losses up when you add, um, adjusting your game plan kind of on the fly because I had to do that with the VXRT and I had a bunch of, uh, of people that actually asked me kind of questions about that specifically when I had to adjust my game plan mid-trade or no, not mid-trade, but while I was analyzing the setup, um, what I originally wanted to have happen wasn't really... Um, in the card. So I had to kind of adjust my game plan as we went. Um, and I went over that at the end of the day recap with everybody. So I'm just going to cover it with you guys now here on the YouTube channel. All right. So VXRT <clears throat> pops up on the scanner, comes up on the radar. Thing just explodes from the opening bell from $2 right up to a high of 440. Okay. Now guys, when, when, when you see this, when you see like a huge explosive candle like this, I am not just jumping into this trade. I'm not just buying this right here. Um, I don't chase momentum candles. I wait for patterns. I wait for setups. Literally, this is exactly what my previous video was just about, um, about waiting for setups. Um, and I don't, ch I don't chase, uh, momentum candles. And, um, so once we got this big explosive move, I'm waiting for the stock to establish its initial morning high. Your initial morning high is established once you get your first pullback. There it is. There's your initial morning high. Now I can take my Fibonacci levels from yesterday's closing price because we had a gap up here today. So when you get a gap up, you got to go from yes the prior day's close up to the current day high on your Fibonacci levels. Okay, and once I did that, my initial buying zone was going to be here. Okay, and it was going to be here because VWAP was lining up with the 38.2 Fibonacci level at that time. Okay, now when you're looking at it after the fact, VWAP is, is climbing higher here because obviously, it, you know, the, the price action up here pulled VWAP up. But at the time, okay, VWAP was sitting right at that 38.2 Fib level. Also important to note, uh, everybody, that I do not include pre-market data in my VWAP and in my 9 EMA. So if you do, your VWAP, your 9 EMA, which is the trade line, is going to be different than mine. Okay, so my indicators only take into account intraday volume. Okay, so VWAP and the, and the 9 EMA, if you have pre-market data in those indicators, it will be different than mine. Okay, so it's important for me to note that. So I'm looking for a VWAP in the 38.2 FIB level to hold support. And you can see we never quite got down there. Like I never quite got that 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 pullback down in front of that 38.2 fib and VWAP just started to hold the stock up. Okay, VWAP started to hold the stock up, and this is when I was actually on the mic um, and I was kind of talking everyone through my analysis on this trade and what I was looking to have happen. And I said, guys, I'm gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to move my 
my entry on this trade up because these are three minute candles. Every time VXRT got down towards VWAP, it popped right back off it. I mean, it would come down, come down, come down, and then pop 10 cents. Come down, come down, come down, come down, pop 10 cents. I mean, it was just popping off VWAP. And I'm just saying to myself, guys, I don't think I'm going to get a pullback down to that 38.2 FIB level. I've got to enter this trade here. And when you find yourself in a situation like that where you're forced to enter a trade higher than you would have initially liked or lower than you would have initially liked if you're trying to short, so and you're you're further away from your stop loss than you want. Lower your position size. I only entered a tier one position because I was too far away from my stop loss. The other lesson I'm going to talk to you about here is is about setting stop losses. You cannot just arbitrarily set a stop loss at a random percentage that you're comfortable risking. You can't just say, I'm going to enter this trade, I'm going to risk 4%. You can't do that. You have to give, you have to set your stop loss based on the pattern. Okay. And if the pattern is telling you stop loss needs to be at a certain level, that's where your stop loss needs to be. You can't just set an arbitrary stop loss in the middle of the range and then you get stopped out. The stock goes higher without you and you're wondering why you get stopped out and the stock always continues without you. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are listening to this video right now that understand exactly what I'm saying because it happens to you. Okay. It happens to a lot of people. A lot of people struggle with this. You can't just set an arbitrary stop loss. You've got to set it to where the um, where the setup requires you to set it. Okay? So if you find yourself where you're entering a position too far away from that stop loss area, you've got to lower your size. That's why I entered just a tier one position right here at 392. I'll take you to my trade announcements. Here we are in the day. Just one trade for me today. You can see long at tier one at 392. My stop loss is just below that... <clears throat> that 38.2 FIB level, and I'm going to add tier two through the 415 region. Okay. That was the tier one entry. So my initial stop on this, okay, was right around here. I'm not willing to risk a full size position from 392 down to 330. So I'm in a tier one position size. Tier one is about 25% of my desired size. Now I can sit in this tier one comfortable Knowing that I may get a pullback back down to 340 or so, whatever it is, but I'm only in a tier one size, so I'm not going to get worried. I'm going to give the stock the time it needs and the, the range that it needs, the room that it needs to finish this consolidation and eventually work its way higher and let the pattern play itself out. You've got to give a stock the room that it needs as long as the risk reward is there. Okay. So there's a tier one entry. Then we had one little pullback and VWAP stuck it again. At this point, this is where we can say to ourselves, guys, the Fibonacci retracement levels are not creating support levels for VXRT. You can see on the first pullback, we held right in the middle of the of the 23.6 and 38.2. Then again, on this, this little tail, we hold again in the middle of the, those two Fib levels. We are not finding support at a Fibonacci level. It's VWAP that's holding the stock up. You can see it. It's VWAP. It's VWAP. Okay, there, there's the tier two entry. As you can see, we had a little bit of a downtrend resistance line here across these lower highs. Okay, across these lower highs, you can see a little downtrend resistance line. And this little tail right there at VWAP, that was your indication. That was your, your key right there. And when I added to this position right here on the break out of this downtrend resistance line at 405, I got a little bit of slippage up to 410 on some of the fill. And we shot right through highs. Okay. It's also important to note that on this tier two entry, I am not risking the, the entire position now back to that original stop loss. Okay. Treat that ad like a completely separate trade because my stop on that would have probably been somewhere just below VWAP around or at the time I, I added VWAP was 385. So if I added at four or five, four or seven up to 410, you know, I, I got a little slippage on that fill. Had we pulled back down and got below VWAP, I'm exiting that tier two position. You have to understand that the reason why you enter tier one is because you think you see something. The reason why you enter tier two and you add to the position, tier two is at least 50% of your desired size. So my tier two is usually at least double my tier one. So let's say tier one's a thousand shares, tier two is at least 2000. So that would take you to a 3000 share position. Okay, maybe tier two might be 2,500. So now I'll take you to a 3,500 share position or whatever it is. Okay, for I'm just making up, okay, just for easy math. Okay, so 
the reason why you enter tier two and you add to position is because the, whatever it is that you thought you saw that caused you to enter the tier one is confirmed. That's when you add. When you're adding to a position, your, your, your win probability on the add should be higher than your win probability on the tier one. Okay? Because if you're adding to the position, that means you are getting some type of confirmation, whether it's volume, whether it's another indicator, whether it's a break above a trend line, whatever the, the reason is. But the stock is giving you some level of confirmation that gives you confidence that you were right, that the reason why you entered tier one, you were right. Okay, so your, your probability, your win rate on that should be higher, okay? And your risk reward should also be um, much in the fa much more tilted in the favor of reward. Your tier one might be, you know, a one and a half to one or a two to one on the tier one entry. But your tier two, on in this example of VXRT, the tier two was three to one, four to one, okay, on the risk reward. And that's how it should be because you should only be adding to the position if you're getting confirmation, that whatever you thought you saw earlier is actually true and it's happening. Okay. So there's the tier two ad. And as soon as we shoot up through high of the day, I just start taking some off the table. 450, uh, actually a little bit lower here. So 450, 475. Take you to my trade announcements. Here you guys can see it took some off 450, took more 475, took another piece at 487. Okay, here's 487. I took some more off. Actually, it was in this. It was in here. I think it might have been actually this, the third candle. It was one of these two candles right in here that I took that 487, and then I got flat right here as we broke down back below VWAP was where I exited that last final piece. Trade announcement sold that remaining piece at 403. Okay, so tier one, tier two, take profit, take profit, take profit. Sold out that last final piece. Okay. The other thing I want to point out to you here, guys, is because um, a, a member had actually asked me why I sold more right here, um, why I sold more at five dollars, because I, I came on the mic and when we were kind of live in this trade and I was kind of telling people that I'm seeing resistance here at five dollars and I lightened up there at 487 and the volume was actually a little bit lighter than I would have liked. And um, in the end of the day, recap today, I had a member actually kind of ask me to, to go over this specific take profit in a little bit more detail. So let me do that with you. When you get this type of action, okay, and you're getting the stars are all aligning. Let me go back and delete my take profits. Okay, let me delete the, the entries. You guys now see, saw all that, okay? When you get this type of action, okay, you get initial morning high, pull back, you break through the initial morning high with a huge increase in volume, heaviest volume the stock experience so far that morning. Then we draw a line across that previous high. There's your initial morning high. Here you can see it's holding support. When you get that next round of that next breakthrough highs, it should go. It should go. You should not hang around there and stall out like we did. And the other thing that I noticed was the break on the new high, because this is a new high, was lower volume than that previous one. So once we broke and we got a little bit of with the volume that I was, I was looking for, you know, another huge volume bar bigger than this one, we didn't quite get it. And you see how the stock stalled for a little bit. These are three minute candles. You see how we stalled out here for a little bit, a little uncharacteristic of this type of pattern. Usually when it breaks out, it should just go. Okay. So when I saw we just weren't going, the volume was a little bit lighter than I would have originally liked to have seen. That's when I dropped another piece of the position at 487. That's another key little, nice little thing that we can talk about that somebody asked me, like I said in chat, to talk about in a little bit more detail. So uh, I wanted to share that, share that analysis and share that thought process with you. So that was the the thought process behind that that take profit there. Um, I just lightened up the position just a little bit because we weren't breaking through. Okay, and that's it. All right, that's that, that's it. That's all she wrote on VXRT. It's my only trade of the day. We only needed the one. Um, like I said, TGG Tuesday was a blast. I had a great time. Thank you if you if you joined us in chat today. Um, was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for coming in. Uh, again, you know, join me next Tuesday. Okay, TrueTradingGroup.com, upper right hand corner, TGG Tuesday. Click on that, register, and you'll get a link that'll give you access into our chat room for free for the entire day next Tuesday. All right. I will see you guys in chat tomorrow. Take care.